A photograph of the village of Aravno in Nagorno-Karabakh greets visitors to Aida Avagyan's home in Goris, a small town tucked among the mountains of southern Armenia near the border with Azerbaijan. A sign above the photograph posted to the door reads, A Breath of Aravno. Avagyan and her four children were evacuated from the village last August, just days before it was handed over to Azerbaijan as part of a Russia-brokered ceasefire declaration that ended large-scale hostilities in and around Nagorno-Karabakh two years earlier. The 2020 war saw Azerbaijan take control of broad swaths of territory previously controlled by Armenians and left more than 7,000 people dead, according to the International Crisis Group. That included Avagyan's husband, who took part in the fighting. As the spouse of a fallen service member and a displaced person, Avagyan received $55,000 in compensation from the Armenian government. After several months living in Yerevan, Avagyan put the money toward buying a home in Goris, about a half-hour drive away from her husband's grave in his ancestral village in Armenia. Our payout was $55,000, but we bought the house for $65,000. The Armenian government provided a loan of $10,000, and so I'm in debt. I have to pay it back within three years. I saw that the home has a guest house attached. I thought, we will be in debt for a while, but we will work and pay back the loan. So, Avagyan decided to start a small business hosting people as they passed through Goris. At that time, Nagorno-Karabakh was under a near-total blockade by Azerbaijan. And so, for the first few months, Avagyan temporarily hosted people evacuated from Nagorno-Karabakh by the International Committee of the Red Cross for urgent medical treatment. Artsakh people were coming from Yerevan to my place and then going back to Artsakh. That is, they were treated in Yerevan and then came to Goris to await transfers back to Artsakh through the Red Cross. Then, on September 19th, after keeping Nagorno-Karabakh in near-total isolation from the outside world for more than nine months, Azerbaijan launched a lightning offensive against the region, leaving hundreds dead. After fewer than 24 hours, the regional government surrendered, prompting the roughly 100,000 Armenians still living there to flee to Armenia. For Avagyan, it brought back many painful memories. In a word, it was very difficult. I went through what I had gone through in 2020 and more. I was even sadder this time. It's true that I lost my husband in 2020, but this war was even more terrible. In response to the latest outbreak of hostilities, Avagyan scrambled to host people forcibly displaced from their homes in Nagorno-Karabakh as they searched for places to stay in Armenia. 16 people came to me. There were 16 people in my small guest house, and in addition to that, there were nine people in my house myself, my four children, my friend, her sister, and her mother. It's true that they really liked Goris, and they wanted to stay here, but in the end, they left for other places. Looking to the future, Avagyan wants to continue hosting people from Nagorno-Karabakh, though she admits she is not sure how long that will last. After everything settles, I don't know how the guest house will work, but at the moment I'm waiting only for the people of Artsakh. Artsakh residents are very close to my heart. Moreover, every time I enter here, I always think that I am at our home in Aravno. I cannot forget about Aravno. Everyone from Artsakh shares that problem with me. I expect that one day we will emerge victorious. We will bring back Artsakh, but for now let's at least keep what we have. At the very least, the borders of Armenia should be strong, so that those displaced families can settle down and live in peace.